Oblivion slowly breaks if you leave it open for two weeks. After just seven days, the game starts to drop frames. This class of bug is actually not that rare. It's shared by a myriad of different games. Even things like my audio interface share the same issue. Oh yeah, and even stranger, while this issue requires you to leave your PlayStation 3 on for two weeks, when running the game through the PlayStation 3 emulator RPCS3, this issue used to appear instantly. Now, you might be thinking that it's a performance bug since the frame rate starts to drop over time. Maybe a memory leak or something. But actually, if we look closer at the footage from day 8, you'll see that the character's head is still moving 30 times per second, but everything else is only updating 15 times per second. Why would this happen? Fortunately, I've encountered this bug before, so I knew where to start looking. To properly understand this issue, let's first start with an explanation of how floating point numbers work. Floating point numbers have one sign bit, which indicates whether the number is positive or negative, 8 bits for the exponent, which controls how large the number gets, and 23 bits for the mantissa, which controls how precise the number is. Okay, let's use a more visual example. Between 1 to 2, the exponent is set to 1, and since we have 23 mantissa bits, we have approximately 8.3 million possible values between 1 to 2. Between 2 to 4, we again have 8.3 million possible values, but the exponent is set to 2 this time. Between 4 to 8, once again, 8.3 million possible values, but the exponent is set to 3. Essentially, each time a floating point number doubles, it becomes half as precise as it was previously. Now, this can become a problem when a game measures the passage of time between frames in a particular way. In this first code, we read the timer, subtract the value of the timer read from the previous frame, then convert our number to floating point. Great. But if you instead wrote the code like this, converting the timer to floating point before performing the arithmetic, you can run into issues with floating point precision. See, people like using floating point numbers because they can represent values with decimals. But once the exponent grows large enough, it actually becomes impossible to represent any non-integer number. As the exponent grows even larger, you actually lose the ability to represent some integer values. Between 16.7 million and 33.5 million, we can only represent every second integer. Between 33.5 million and 67.1 million, we can only represent every fourth integer. So once the timer gets large enough, the conversion to floating point will inevitably start losing some precision by rounding. And if we were to leave the game on longer and longer and longer, the game will break even further. Since this mistake is so easy to make, it's present in many games. Here's Ratchet and Clank, a crack in time. First without a high up time, and now with a high up time. The animation of the gears becomes choppy at a high up time, since the delta time calculation is being impacted by the floating point rounding. Also, the game is rendering in a lower resolution, since the game has a dynamic resolution system, where it will drop the resolution if you're dropping frames. Now, the game isn't actually dropping frames, but evidently, the broken delta time causes it to believe that it's dropping frames. Now, you might be asking, why is the gameplay unaffected by the buggy delta time code and only some background elements impacted? Good question. I don't know either. Now, the Oblivion clips at the start of the video were recorded on a real PlayStation 3, with the game running 24-7 for two weeks. With the Ratchet & Clank comparison, I only booted the game for a few moments in the RPCS3 emulator. Actually, I'm using an old version of RPCS3 here, because I fixed this bug in newer versions. Old versions of RPCS3 essentially leak your PC's uptime into the game, so if I boot Oblivion on these older versions, you can see that the animations are bugging out after it being open for just a minute. Now, I've only been talking about PlayStation 3 games so far, but this also impacts native PC games as well. Silent, a fellow cookie enthusiast and game modder was investigating an issue in the PC version of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. This was essentially the same bug that's in Oblivion and Ratchet and Clank. The game is converting timer reads to floating point before performing arithmetic. Now, Silent also notes something else important here. Starting with Windows 8, Microsoft has added a feature called Fastboot. If Fastboot is enabled, the machine will enter a pseudo-hibernate state instead of shutting down, to improve boot times. As a side effect, the uptime will no longer reset when shutting the machine down. This meant that games with high uptime bugs started to be encountered more often, even by users who didn't leave their computers on overnight. This same phenomenon impacted RPCS3 as well, as we were leaking high uptime into the game. Just like with Grand Theft Auto, modern versions of Windows were making this issue more pronounced. To fix this issue in RPCS3, we only needed to do this. Take the time at boot, and subtract that time from the current time. This way, if your PC has high uptime, it won't leak into the game. I mean, unless you go ahead and leave RPCS3 open for two weeks, I guess. Now, all of the issues we've discussed thus far required a lot of time to manifest, but in Dota 2 you can start to see issues even in a 40 minute match. You see, Dota has a day and night cycle. Every three minutes, the game shifts day to night, then after the next three minutes, the game shifts night to day. What could go wrong? Well, the transition from day to night is two seconds late here. Oops. Actually, I didn't even realize that they fixed this issue in 2016 until I was scripting this video. Go figure. 
Does anyone remember DS Fix? You know, the mod for the original PC release of Dark Souls that allowed you to raise the resolution and frame rate? Older versions of DS Fix used to have a similar issue with the frame limiter becoming more unstable over time. Since DS Fix is open source, we can see exactly how it was solved. In this early version, DS Fix would convert time to a floating point number before messing with it. In the newer versions, DS Fix converts the timer reading directly to a double precision number. Double precision floats have a 52-bit wide mantissa, over twice as wide as a single precision float. Now this doesn't exactly solve the floating point precision issues, but for it to get as bad as it does with a single precision float does in two weeks, we would need to have an uptime of just under 15 million years. Actually, it wouldn't even ever reach this point as the 64-bit timer we're using would wrap around well before we reach that point. As much as I don't like it, converting directly to a double is fine for all practical purposes. Actually, we can go ahead and do the math to figure out just how long it'll take for the floating point precision to degrade. Check out this table. Since we know the game is reading the hardware timer that's running at 80 million times per second, we know that it takes just 0.2 seconds for floating point precision to lose the ability to convert all integer numbers without rounding. And we can see how long it will take to reach other milestones. Wait, it's gonna degrade after 10 days? That's not right, the last event was after 14 days. Aw oh, crap, my assumption's all wrong. Alright, this is Ghidra, a program for reverse engineering software produced by the NSA. On this screen, we have the disassembly of 128 bytes of instructions. Now the PlayStation 3 Oblivion binary is 22.2 megabytes in size, so that means that there's hundreds of thousands of screens just like this. Forget about finding a needle in a haystack, this is like finding a drop of water on Mars. Unfortunately, I just can't find the real issue. Just kidding, you're looking at the offending code on screen already. This instruction calls a function which returns elapsed time in microseconds. It does this safely using integer math, so there's no loss in precision. R3 is the return value for our function, so let's look down here. Here, the value in R3 is stored to memory, then loaded from memory back into a floating point register. Then it converts the microseconds to a double precision float, then it rounds it to single precision here. This awkward pattern is necessary since PowerPC lacks a way to convert integer to floating point directly. Next, the code loads a constant number from memory here, in this case the number it's loading is 1000. Then it divides our microseconds by 1000 to convert microseconds to milliseconds. Then it converts our floating point number back into an integer and moves it back from the floating point registers to the general purpose registers with another pair of store and load instructions. Now, this code sucks not just because it causes the floating point instability we've been talking about this whole video, but it also sucks performance wise, for some PlayStation 3 specific reasons. See, on modern machines, CPU designers implement a feature known as store forwarding. Essentially, when you have a pair of stores and loads close together like this, rather than loading from memory or cache, the load will take data directly from the store buffer, which greatly reduces the latency of this pattern. On the PlayStation 3, the load will have to wait until the data is written back to the L2 cache, which entails about a 40 cycle stall. This code does this twice. You may have heard Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 developers talking about this before. It's commonly known as a load hit store. Anyways, now that we know that the game code is converting microseconds, essentially a timer with 1 million ticks per second into floating point, we can create a new table. Now this table is more like what we observed. Now look, it says 12.73 days, but remember the recording for the first day was after 0 days had actually elapsed. So if we were to count the first day as day 0, and the 14th day as the 13th day, this table can be reconciled. Phew. Now, if learning about floating point nonsense hasn't put you off programming forever, I think you should consider learning about programming through this video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a unique learning app with visual and interactive lessons that you can tackle at your own pace. Since you can complete lessons on your phone or your PC, it's easy to fit Brilliant's daily challenges into your everyday routine. Brilliant features dozens of courses, but if you're interested in learning the basics of programming, Brilliant has visual courses that can help you learn Python at your own pace. If programming isn't your thing, Brilliant also has courses that cover math, science, data, and logical reasoning, among others. If you're interested and want to start learning for free, go to brilliant.org slash whatcookie, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. If you sign up using my link, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And once again, thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, as I was able to purchase a capture card with their help. Check out what happens when you leave the game running for four weeks on a real PlayStation 3. It's been running for over four weeks now. It sucks complete ass now. Just look at this shit. Oh. My guy is now punching forever. Good. Oh. What have I done? Okay. <laughs> my guy cannot punch, but he can take.
And you can't walk up the step either. You can only turn. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh, at least he can jig at full speed. Oh shit. I'm doing it. I triggered the cutscene. Alright, that's enough of that. Like and subscribe for more. See ya guys.